I do not give you what Nels does when it doesn't. No, they are hung, so it's not like it. <laughs> but you know, it, it's, it's such a memory of when the guys get up in the morning first thing and light the fire. We were in the kitchen doing trifles and stuff. And he's gone now, so I'm in my kitchen and I brought my hangies from the hangy shop. <laughs> oh, there you go. That's fantastic. I tell you what, uh, my uh, my stepdad who um, left us a, a few years ago. This uh, this every Christmas, uh, this Christmas we're doing his lamb. It's always referred to as Peter's lamb. Oh, uh, yeah, yep, nice. soaked in balsamic vinegar and rosemary, a bit of garlic, and onto the barbecue. Very very particular method. So there's nothing like some of those food memories that actually bring our loved ones uh, back into the present with us, even when they've Hi. departed. Thank you, Eileen. Have a very merry, merry Christmas. Christmas. Hey. And a very good tip should you in future do another hungy, uh, Luke. Just bung it in the microwave afterwards. Oh, well, that's what we did. Yeah, absolutely. But it did feel a little bit uh, uh, deflating, to be honest, because we put a lot of hard work in. It's something that I want to revisit. Um, so nice to hear uh, that it can actually work. Mm -hmm. mm. Maybe just, you know, next time check the weather report a few days ahead. Well, hey, we live in New Zealand, so it can be glorious. <laughs> and the weather report can say one thing, then on the day uh, it does something else. That's what it is, being a New Zealander, isn't it? Yeah, it is. 0800 80 10 80. We'd love to hear your Christmas memories of spectacular successes or absolutely fabulous fails. Um, did you? Here's the question. Once you dug the, dug the hungy pit, did you then fill it back in, or is it still there? Can oh, you no. go again? No, you can. You can. We, we filled it in. But actually, we were speaking to someone earlier who was talking about composting in a hole rather than using plastic composting bins. So I'm thinking that your compost hole could also no. You can't hungy where you compost. No. There's got to be a no. rule about that. <laughs> I think that. Do might not be... hungy where you compost. Everybody knows that. That might be shortening the. Uh, that might be shortening the ecosystem cycle just a little bit. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> just, just stray from one place. Yeah, to this just seems a little bit charred. This fertilizer. <laughs> oh my word. <laughs> <laughs> Love to hear your Christmas traditions, your Christmas fails, or Christmas successes, actually. And and what those uh, callers were just sharing is kind of the, the Christmas memories around loved ones. Uh, we had uh, Barbara on the phone talking about missing her family in England um, and maybe uh, this year you've actually lost somebody close to you and you might have a memory about Christmas that comes back to you because of that loved one. Why don't you give us a call? We'd love to hear from you 0800 80 10 80 or text 9292. Indeed. Um, I do, you know, it's interesting. There, there are certain types of Christmas decorations that I think always have a special place on the tree. Mm. You know, the, uh, the baby's first decoration. That's a, that's a nice one, you know, when they join. We've had a few of those this morning. Um, but I also, you know, I love it when somebody when somebody passes on, um, a, you know, kind of a commemorative decoration, something that's kind of like, oh, yeah, we'll put that on the tree and, and then, then there they are. You yeah. know, not bad. A I, full I like clay it. model of Dad <laughs> hanging from the tree. <laughs> Life size. <laughs> uh, maybe it could replace the star on top. Is that too? <laughs> oh, there's a question. Are you are you a star on top or an angel on top? Oh, we're definitely an angel on top. Oh. Always have been an angel on top. Yeah. Yeah, a star's nice though, and I like the symbolism around both. To be perfectly fair, but uh, we've got a beautiful angel. We've had it since our daughters were born, and it now feels like a bit of a tradition in our house. What oh. about you? Yeah, I'm a star. I'm a star on top. But I don't know that I put that much thought into it. I think it was at the time I, you know, well, as you know, I, you know, I ended up back in New Zealand unexpectedly and had to decorate a tree and I didn't have a, um, you know, a star is what I found. You didn't have a topper. I didn't have a topper. I didn't have a tree <laughs> topper, you know? Yeah. And that was stars were what were available. Sure. <laughs> You're on News Talk ZB uh, with Luke and Tash on your Christmas morning, 0800 80 10 80. Give us a call, let us know uh, what's on top of your tree and 
um, agreed to, to let us chat to you this morning. Merry Christmas. Hey, Merry Christmas to you too, Tash, and to you, Luke. Um, thank you, and yes, it would have been uh, lovely to be with you, but um, slight different priorities for me this year. <laughs> Look, everybody deserves a day off once in a while. We'll, we'll let you have it. Uh, tell us yeah, what's going honest, on at your I place this morning. <laughs> Look, to be, I, I was I was just um, halfway through flipping a pancake when uh, Josh called, um, which was my second one. My first one was an utter disaster, mm. but the second one I think will be absolutely fine. The first one's always a disaster, though, isn't it? That's that's the one yeah, you offer up <laughs> as a sacrifice to the cooking job. <laughs> It's the one. It's the one that allows you to get the temperature and the and the butter ratio in the pan just right. That's that's yep. my theory. Jolly yep. good. So what else is happening this morning? Well, look, we've had a fairly leisurely kind of start to the day, and I know in most households, Christmas morning is frantic and lots of rushing around. Um, our boys a little bit on now, so a sleep in is a good idea. Um, so we've had a leisurely sort of um, wake up. Uh, to each other for a while, exchange some gifts, which was lovely. Now we'll cook, then we'll get into preparing food, and later on this afternoon, my family or my part of the family will come, or most of us. Um, so we'll sit down this afternoon with about, I think it's 16 or 17 people outside. Um, I mowed the lawns yesterday, the garden's looking tidy, the umbrella's up, so it'll be Christmas with, with my family. So. It always feels good uh, mowing the lawns, doesn't it? Such a, such yeah, a lovely absolutely. feeling. And I, I, I've become a little obsessive, as people do, with their lawn. So I mowed on Monday just to get it down to roughly the right height, did a little bit of growth up, and then mowed them again yesterday. And I think, well, it's not great, but it's not too bad. Hey, Pete, you've been a builder since 1987, uh, which incidentally Indeed. was the first time there was, uh, the last time there was timber in New Zealand for builders to build. <laughs> um, <laughs> in all seriousness, I mean, what's it going to be like for the building industry in 2022? Because, I mean, things are getting pretty tough. Actually, funny you mention that because the, the, the instant memory that pops into my mind is I can remember working with Tom. We were building a house on the shore. We got it all thinned up, closed in, and there was, I think it was strikes at that time at the, where they made plasterboard. And so you couldn't get plasterboard, and then suddenly they'd stop striking and they'd do a production run. And we drove to the factory to grab the plaster. It was still warm when it came out of the machine um, so that we could carry on. So in that sense, look, Shortages are not something that, that most of us have been around for a little while, haven't experienced before. But it would be to say that this this is extraordinary times in a combination of sort of factories closing down. We're a little island, the bottom of the world, so no one wants to send their ships here. 90% uh, of our building materials have some sort of overseas component to them. Um, yeah, it's challenging, all right. Does that mean that, uh, that it's perhaps not going to be the great summer of DIY here in New Zealand? Oh, look, I tell you what, I, as it happened, might have been in one of those large stores during the course of this week. Um, and, you know, I mean, look, there's still plenty of stuff there. And I, it, it's always funny the days before Christmas watching people drive out and there's, you know, decking timber strapped down onto the trailer. Or uh, my neighbours the other day got a little truck and they were tipping off, I think it looked like garden but mulch and topsoil and so on, so getting that little guard better. It, it's, it's not like there's not anything. You have to be a little bit more organised um, and you may not get exactly what you want, but most stuff is there most of the time. Um, I think where it's had an interesting impact is, you know, for a trade people, Christmas is often that I want the kitchen and I want the roof on, I want to be closed in and so on. And a lot of those sorts of deadlines haven't been able to be achieved.